So I'm going to suggest to you that neither tank or tankless is the right answer. Straight tankless or standard storage water heaters do not meet our desires for performance of good hot water systems. Right? We want some level of hot water now. And the only way I know how to have instantaneous hot water is to have hot water in the water heater before you turn on the tap. And it's got to be close to the fixtures in question. So you've got to figure out how to get it from there to there. That's the problem. We want instantaneousness and we want continuousness. Those are the two big values I would describe. And what we're looking for is a burner or element on the order of two gallons to three gallons a minute, which works out to be, for most of the country, most of the, the North America, somewhere between 80 to 120,000 BTUs of gas or 20 to 30 kW electric all of which we can do in new construction today, can't we? We could plan for this. This is not a fatal flaw in anybody's terms. All right? If you're at 80,000 BTUs, actually if you're at 75,000 BTUs, even at almost 80,000, you only need a half inch gas line. For typical distances, you only need a half inch. That means it's standard construction. Nothing's different. By the way, you're more efficient, so you need plastic flue pipe. You want high efficiency. You don't want B-Vent. You want to have plastic flue pipe. So it's actually less expensive to install it right. All right. You want some tank. That's what gives you instantaneousness. How big is the tank? The smallest legal tankless water heater I have seen, tankless is defined by statute, meaning anything with a water heater that's got less than two gallons and a biggish burner. So the smallest one I've seen has a half gallon tank built in. And it's set up so that the job of the burner is to keep the tank hot. At really low flow rates, what comes out? Hot water. What comes out when you turn on any flow rate? Hot water. What does the burner do? As you need more hot water, the continuousness function rises up to 109,000 BTUs, or about 5 gallons per minute. Okay. One water heater I've seen is a 34-gallon tank and a 199,000 BTU burner. That starts to look pretty smart for an awful lot of homes. By the way, it could do heating, couldn't it? What's the typical heat load of an average house in the United States now in BTUs per hour? Okay. I need, I'll be done, promise. It turns out it's about 40,000 BTUs. I got 150,000, 200,000 BTUs in my burner. I can do almost anything, can't I? Okay. We've talked about the concept of structured plumbing. I'm going to move pretty quickly here now. We need to wrap up. What I want to leave you with is we need to plan the plumbing in every building so that it's structured for that building. Does that make sense? We want to plan, in most cases, what I have seen to be the most cost-effective way to, to meet the challenge I gave you earlier is to use a concept that, we are, that someone I know calls structured plumbing, and it's a trademark name. But the concept is this. Plan the plumbing so that it gets close to every fixture on the trunk line and keep the twigs from the trunk line to the fixtures as short as practical, ideally under 10 feet. There's some exceptions. If anyone would like copies of Structured Plumbing Guidelines, I have them electronically. Give me a business card, send me an email, whatever it is, and we'll make sure you get them. All right. Turns out there's six types of research systems. Okay. They all use too much energy except one type so far. And here's the problem. I said it earlier. If you have 5 degrees temperature drop, 1 gallon per minute, it costs you 292 therms a year to keep the loop warm, plus the cost of running the pump. So if somebody tells you it doesn't cost much to run my pump, it's only, you know, a 40th of a horsepower. That's not the problem. It's the heat loss. Okay? And if it's electrical, it gets pretty big. When do you not want to run a circ pump? When you don't need hot water. How many people are home right now? This is a trick question. You are here. You don't need hot water at home right now. All right. And when you're sleeping or doing something else, and when you're using hot water, what's coming out of the, hot, of the tap? Hot water. What do you need the circ loop running for? You only need it to run just before you want hot water. Okay. And in almost every case we have found, including multifamily buildings, in some, most many commercial buildings, the pumps are running way under an hour a day. We have test results from all over the country in all size buildings now. In a typical residential application, it's 10 minutes a day. 
you can afford that electricity. One last thing I want to talk about with you now is drain heat recovery. What's the temperature of water that's running down the drain while you take a shower? 100 degrees. Is there some heat in that? Do you think if we could pick up a few degrees of heat it would, and preheat the cold side of the shower valve that it would be worth something? It's worth a whole bunch. And if you can do that just for showers, you get about 80 or 90 percent of the value you'll ever get out of current drain heat recovery systems. And you can have a lot more continuousness at a lot less total hot water use. Okay? You can pick up 30 or 40 degrees of heat out of these things and preheat the cold side 30 or 40 degrees. That's more than halfway to the point you want it raised to. Okay? That's it. I want to thank you for your time and attention. I hope we've covered a whole bunch of things related to practical plumbing and being more efficient. We teach all day classes on this topic. I do some teaching for Green Plumbers USA on a fairly regular basis. And the next time I'm going to be doing talks is in Wisconsin uh, for the Energy Center of Wisconsin, uh, the week of September 8th. If anyone's interested or knows somebody who ought to be, come see me and I'll give you more information. Thank you all very much. <laughs>